to start. Okay. Um, I'm going to chat out really quickly to make sure everybody can hear me. If you could let me know, that would be great. Excellent. Thank you, Gina. All right. And we're ready to go. Welcome to Office Hours. Uh, today is August 15th. And... Uh, the office hours is being recorded and will be placed in the customer community later for viewing. Uh, so today, uh, you know, we're ex look, we're excited. We uh, adding these new uh, the new diagnostics feature. Uh, this is meant in conjunction with the medical note with the custom fields for medical notes. Uh, you know, if I've learned anything in my job is <laughs> no matter what we build. Uh, veterinarians will be at, will ask for more and that's perfectly fine because that's how you keep us on our toes uh, please know that we build as fast and there's there's only 24 hours in the day we build as fast as we can and what I'm really one thing I'm really happy about is I already received uh, dozens of emails from people saying hey how come this field isn't in back you know the diagnostics or this or that and the great thing is is that's why we have the custom fields feature now to help make it work for your clinic in a better way. So a bit of a back, bit of a background here. So I'm going to mute. Some Who is it? Who is it? Okay, I was just muting people here. Okay, great. So a bit of a background here. We work with. I I, I need people to know that we don't pull these things out of a you know a, a, a magic hat. We work with. Um, a number of clinics every time we release a big feature uh, some are big you know, of our go-to some are people who volunteered to work with us uh, and it's a sampling of clinics uh, we range from we take a specialty clinic always a mobile clinic and please remain muted you guys please put yourselves muted because we pick up all the background noise wherever you are okay thank you and and so, and the hospitals that we work with are our largest providers. And so we want to, we, we want to have a broad sampling from, let's say a small mobile vet. Um, and then we always use our CEO's brother, who was the first user of Vetter, who's a veterinarian. And then we use other clinics around the country to vet these features. This feature in particular, I want to give a shout out to Pine Animal Hospital in Long Beach, uh, Dr. Steve Maniak. Uh, worked with us uh, very, um, I really applaud his efforts. He worked with us very uh, diligently to get these features in. And sorry, I'm going back to please keep yourself muted. A lot of you keep unmuting yourself. Sorry, the background noise filters into the uh, demo. Okay, so what we did here, let me, let's me take a look first at the diagnostics. And the idea here was, we wanted to cr literally find every diagnostic test that you might use and uh, so assign values to them and so that you could import them into the medical notes and then import them into the patient record. And by assigning values to them, this is something, please, you guys, please remain muted. So when you guys keep unmuting yourselves, stop it. <laughs> please remain muted. Okay. If you want to, write a question type it in on chat or at the very end then we'll open up the mics the idea of this was also that we want to be able to report on these things so when we build features in vetter okay um and let's just look at a at the uh sorry let's look at the diagnostics first when we build features in vetter um we always build them first to create the minimum viable product. A product that can be used by most of our clinics, most of the time, most, right? It's just the way software is built. And then we build enhancements to it. You guys stay muted. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take away your like, I'm gonna put you on no, no dessert for you. <laughs> um, and what we do here is when I say this, minimum viable product is because we're going to add to the diagnostics. We're going to add in the sense that they're, they're going to become reportable by having values. 
that are associated with these, right? All these diagnostics here. You're gonna have the ability then also, right, to see them in reports. Will that come immediately? No. Will it be built? Yes. Okay, really, please. I need you, I need you guys to stay muted. <laughs> Stop unmuting yourselves. <laughs> or you're grounded. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So what we see here are, for example, the diagnostics, and I and then we break them down here, right? With the, as much val, as many values as we can. If we drop them in, as you can see right here, there's you know, left limb, right hind limb, right forelimb, right? We're trying to get as much in there as possible, okay? Ear cytology, right? It get, this gets pretty extensive, as you can see. Electrocardiogram, right? And we're gonna have pull-down values wherever possible, okay? Now, if, if some of these don't have pull-down values and you want, you want them to be in there, right? We can always use the custom field. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. In a uh, skin smear, and that's a word I always like saying, <laughs> um, one of our dermatologists wrote me yesterday, uh, Dr. Amy Harstad, and I applaud Amy. Amy said, hey, you know, dermatologists, we don't call it smear, we call it a skin cytology. And I said, oh, wow, okay, I didn't recognize that. I mean, I didn't know that. And so here's a way that we could go ahead and change that. So for example, let's leave this note here. Um, so I think this is uh, Jordan. You have a question. I, someone has their hand up. Jordan does. Uh, can I help you guys? Jordan put their hand up. Uh, it's kind of like school. It's kind of cool. Um, Please, Jordan, please remain muted, okay? Um, I see your hand up. If you'd like to ask a question, please chime in on the chat, okay? I like the hand, though. It's kind of cool. So what I, what I worked with her yesterday, what I showed her was this. So I've saved the note here, got some values, and she said, okay, please, this is very – Jordan, please keep yourself muted, Okay? because we're picking up all the phone calls and everything else in the clinic, all right? Thank you. Okay, now, what we did is this. So I come to templates and I say, hey, I want to call that skin cytology, for example. So let's view the custom fields. And we have custom fields already, and we can add a new one. So let's just say we make a new template, and I'm gonna call this skin cytology instead of skin smear. You don't like the name of it. I perfectly, I perfectly understand. I get it. Customize it to fit your clinic. And we'll come to here and we'll call this a custom field. Now it's going to ask me, where does this go? Okay. This would go under diagnostics, right? And then what part of the diagnostics? Okay. Now we're not going to put it under skin smear where right? It's going to be its own. We're going to use it to replace skin smear. So we don't need a subcategory here, okay? And simply put, I'm going to hit save and done. And here's one thing is uh, I brought up last week. If you see this enter a value, because the software wants a value when creating a custom field, and you don't want to write one, just hit the space bar. It satisfies the requirements of the software, and you're good to go. Now we'll hit save and done. Now I'm going to come back to that office hours note I created. Use my little handy dandy lightning bolt feature up there and I'm in the office hour note. Okay. Template is going to appear. I come to diagnostics here, right? And I wanted to see, well, I don't like skin smear. I want to call it skin cytology. And there you go. I have skin cytology instead. Now, I could have a pull-down value for this. There isn't one. Now, and this is an extreme example. You say, yeah, Matt, but um, Kochi, I hope I pronounced that right, or Kokai, uh, I believe it's Kokai, rods, yeast, other microscopic findings, they're not there, okay? Because they're underneath skin smear. And if you wanted to redo this, it's possible. So I'm gonna look, in other words, I would look at this first. I would see their values. 
right? Uh, within normal cocci infection, right? Value, I could put these things in here and you can recreate those fields and then put them underneath skin psychology. It's imperfect, I acknowledge that. Uh, but it's a pretty darn good solution, right, to modifying the template to suit your needs. Okay, now with all these extra values here, understand these will then result in the ability for us to show trending results and to also issue these in reports. Where else can I pull this up, right, the diagnostics? I could pull them up directly in a, from the patient record. And being a Bay Area sports fan, it's football time. Jimmy Garoppolo and his dog, Niner. Well, they don't really exist, but bear with me. <laughs> and if I wanted to come to here in history and just assign a diagnostic, absolutely. I come to diagnostic here, right? And here are all the exact same values. And let's just say, you know, you didn't have them. You don't have them in your medical notes yet, okay? You haven't had a chance to redo the notes. Hey, no problem. Here they are, right? I can, in other words, I could still add these values, right? Directly from the patient record until you redo your notes. All right, I pick any one of these things and, you know, here we go. Uh, here's our skin smear. And if you notice the subcategories are already in here, cocci, rods, yeast, right? And, you know, uh, a pancreatic uh, test, right? Negative, positive. Uh, let's go with negative. That's better for result for the animal. And, right, it's then going to go ahead and show any kind of tests I've had. It's going to then reflect it in the history, right? And the history is seen under view diagnostics right here. And you start to see, right, trends over a while, right? If I just want to see blood pressure, here they are, okay? Now, please understand these are different from diagnoses, okay? And because we still have all of our diagnoses, here are the diagnostics. Something else about a little, another small change is under vitals. We used to have 16 different vitals, but after working with doctors, we were told that most of those vitals were really just diagnostics. They don't really count as vitals. So these are the five vitals we're using. The others have moved to diagnostics. And one other thing is that you can also add these things, right, from the, pay, the medical note itself, which is what I always recommend. Add from the note because then it's going to be tied to the note. Hey, blood glucose, what have you, any test you want, values, hyperglycemic, no good. <laughs> Let's put our little guy with the normal limits. And honestly, I don't know what a good value is. I feel like 45 right now. I know I can be scolded later <laughs> for that. And boom. And now it's one, it's going to show in the record. Hey, here are our diagnostics. Okay. Also, it's going to show then right in the patient record. And this is me. I, I don't want to be a broken record, but you've heard me harp on this as much as humanly possible. Add your findings from the medical note. Why? Because if I view these later, right, and I view these six months later, it's kind of like, oh, where does blood glucose level come from? Oh, or well, the test, it came from this medical note on June 13th. I then access this note, right, right away. And the idea is, of course, that I have more information there that would shed some insight into why I ran that test at that time and why I ran it spontaneously. Since I didn't add blood glucose, or let's say, or blood pressure to the, the note, you might ask, there was something I saw in the animal, right, or something the client reported that led me to do this. And then, of course, we're in the note, and you could look at the note and see if you have any specific findings here. I mean, in this case, uh, there aren't because I don't fill these notes out. But... You get the idea, okay? I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions right now. Pretty straightforward. Um, I guess I'm doing a good job. We're going to go with that. <laughs> and so that is our new diagnostic feature, right, in conjunction with the, uh, the medical, note medical note or custom field feature. The idea is that it expands the value, right, of 
your experience. And I hope that this will work for your ver various practices. Um, well, I'm also here is before I go into reports, I was going to review reports briefly, is many of you, you've all received an email from my colleague, Ross Campbell, and it's about improving your email deliverability. Um, if you get a chance, please respond to Ross. It takes about 10 minutes. Ross is going to work with you on, it's called your DNA server, uh, I'll be honest, or DNS server. This is beyond me. It's how email, it's how your domain name is seen by mail clients and mail, M-A-I-L, by mail clients and how, whether your domain is viewed as safe or as risky or as what have you. And he will work with you a little trick that'll make your, ensure that your domain name remains safe or is seen as safe and thus improve email deliverability. Look, a quick review here. People get frustrated. They say, hey, a client didn't get my email. I got to tell this is, it's a brave new world we live in. We can show that the email was sent. We can show that the email was even, you know, but we can't show end-to-end -end right delivery because we don't know what your, you know, your, your customer, your client has set up for their email settings, right? They may have accidentally marked you as spam right, a long time ago. Yeah, well, then that email is never going to get to them. Or, for example, the, the main mail clients out there, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, lesser degree, AOL, right, these guys have incredibly strict security protocols now. Why? Because of the, the phishing and hacking scandals, right, from past years, they err on the side of caution. And what these mail servers do is, right, you won't even know this, but but let's say maybe your domain name, right, uh, you know, vettersoftware.com, for example, was was a victim of a, a, a phishing attack or a Trojan worm attack or people tried to hack it, and you would never know this. You wouldn't know this. And let's say your domain, you know, provider, be let's say GoDaddy.com, for example, they they thwarted the attack. That's fine. You don't know this ever happens. But on the other end, what's going on is that let's say it's Yahoo. Yahoo says, "Hey, uh, these guys keep getting attacked, right? Vetter's domain keeps getting attacked. We're not going to allow any mail, emails from Vetter to go to our." clients and you don't even know this is happening and this is the the world we now live in and it's a very tricky proposition doing email delivery this is why there are so few companies who do it the short answer is i tell everyone use gmail <laughs> google's got this wired they're the best at it there's a reason why google's so darn successful and yahoo isn't but i realize that people don't want to change their maybe their email my name. So take advantage of my colleague Ross's uh, offer, not offer, right, service. And he works with you, takes about 10 minutes. He's going to work with you in your email settings and it will greatly enhance deliverability. Does it see if there's any questions about that? Um, no, we're doing fine. Okay. Now we're going to jump into reports very quickly. And I just like to occasionally review these to show you reports that are, I find to be the most important, okay? Um, in the schedule, there are two reports I find of great value. The referral source summary, right? And the sales by appointment type, okay? Now, both of these reports, let me edit the dates here to get a better date range, let's say this year. Both of these reports only work if you check in an appointment from the schedule with a um, with an invoice, okay? And this will show you, right, again, it's going to show you who did the most referring. Hey, Dr. Seuss, he's a damn good referrer. And it's going to, um, and like I said, it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, why don't we send him a thank you card or say, hey, 10% off on your next visit, what have you. And this is valuable to me as a business owner to see where my business is coming from. It also will show me marketing campaigns 
flyer vaccine promo that I hung on the door handle. And you set these up in settings, right? Marketing campaigns. You put in the cost of the campaign. It's very easy. It takes 20 seconds to do. And then any client coming in, hey, how'd you hear about us? Well, we saw the Facebook ad for free nail trim, right? No problem, okay? And it's then going to reflect revenue generated from each referral, and it's going to give you return on investment, okay? I think, you know, hey, how'd you hear about us? Yelp, okay, cool. Hey, Yelp's a benign source, right? I don't have to pay to use Yelp. Maybe this means that I should, you know, encourage more of my clients to place, you know, reviews of my clinic on Yelp, thus driving more business here. You get the idea, okay? Um, the other report is sales by appointment type. And especially if you're doing a lot of surgeries, you're a specialty clinic, it's nice to see which appointment types yield the most revenue, okay? And it's going to show the providers for the appointment type. It's going to break it down, right, by any date range. It's quite thorough. And it's a good ability to assess, good way to assess, right, which appointments are most valuable and whether you should devote more time on the schedule to them or less time, okay? Uh, now, quick review of, you know, patient reports. Uh, all pretty standard. The two here that... I would call your attention to are the diagnosis summary report and the rabies summary report. And the diagnosis summary report, uh, let's do a let's do a filter here. And um, oh, we're adding the ability. Sorry, this will be out in a. I thought this was out today. It's not going to be out today. It's going to be out in a uh, this month though. So. The ability to filter by date range. Okay, so you have a date range for the diagnosis too but this breaks down total diagnoses, right? And then it breaks it down by patient and diagnoses and when open and if closed and if you had any notes, okay? And this again is just valuable reporting information and like I said, you might find certain trends. You know, God forbid you live, let's say it was Flint, Michigan and you saw a lot of animals suddenly because of drinking bad water, right? A lot of animals with a certain diagnosis, it might indicate that there is an environmental trend, right, afoot. Um, now, the rabies summary report um, is, it's nice to have, but it's going to be most useful for government, report, government agencies that require reporting, okay? And not every, some of, some of you live in areas where I know even the city requires a rabies summary report, but at the very least, the county and the state. Others of you live in locales where it's not required at all. But if you are in those areas, here, right, we can go ahead and export this, print it however needed, right, gives us a rabies summary, and we can always filter by canine, feline, or other. And we can also filter if I just want to see, depending on where I live, hey, in Redwood City, right? Just anyone from there, if you just have to report by on a citywide level, okay? Um, jumping now to the next set of reports, clients. The most important one here is the lapsed client report. People haven't been in the last 12, 18, or 24 months. A, of course, on the most basic level, it allows you to clean up your accounts and say, they haven't been in two years, let's inactivate, deactivate them, the account. Or two, Right, the next step is marketing. Hey, let's market these clients. Right, let's send out an email blast to them. Right, and the way you could do this is say, Hey, I have an edit date here. Let's say who hasn't been in the last 18 months. Okay, and I generate a report. Now, people always say, How do I email from here? And this has been one of my tips of the week is. If you take a look here very quickly, what you could do is you could export the report. Okay, now it's going to come down comma separated values or CSV. Simply means it's going to be exported in a spreadsheet style format and the values are separated, right? So that means I have email in one column and, you know, client address in another and I hit save. It's down here on my desktop. It all depends on, you know, how your system works, where it appears. I'm just going to drag it to right here, okay? 
And I'm going to go ahead and open this. I'm going to show you then how to email these people. So a lot of people say, hey, so what? I got an outlapsed client report. How do I email them? Okay. So it's going to take a moment to open the report. So it's a large report. Okay. And here it is. It's open now. And what you'll see is this. It is, oh, um, Oh, I just see a, I saw a chat here, sorry, from Dr. Looper. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. For some reason, my chat wasn't revealing that I had a message, and I apologize. Uh, from Dr. Looper, do we have to make a new note to have the diagnostics option? Yes, you do. You can't add it to an existing note. Um, just, it, it's all, it's the way the, the code base works. It's what I've been told from the engineering. Um, unfortunately, you have to, create a new note to add the diagnostics. Um, and it, it, I re we realize requires a little bit of extra effort, but it will, it's, it's unfortunately the way the engineers have built the product, Dr. Looper. Now, if, like I said, until that new note is built though, uh, you can always add those diagnostics directly from the patient record or from the existing, right? Or you're in a medical note, add it to the existing medical note. And thank you for your understanding. I have no idea why my, my chat wasn't showing up. I'm sorry. But to go back to my example here of, and it looks kind of jumbled and it's not perfect, and we get that. It's just to get the information to you. I'm going to make this feel a little larger so you see everything. Hey, here are, right, here are the emails from everybody. And I want to email, right, all my GLAPS clients in the last 18 months. Simply highlight the, the column, copy, right? Coming up here, file, uh, or is it edit here? Copy, control C, right? I've copied this now. Now, I jump to my email service, my mail client. I'm gonna use my better Gmail account, right? And I wanna email everybody. Hey, not a problem. I hit compose. And I come to here, and I want to email everybody. Now, a trick with emailing a large client base, you put them on BCC. Why? Because that way they can't blind carbon copy, right? They can't see each other's emails. And now I just do paste, right? I'm going to paste this. And voila, there they all are. Just get rid of that little email there. You still got to send it to someone, though. So I always just say send it to yourself. That's fine. And then here's your message. Hey, haven't seen you in the clinic in a couple years or in a year or what have you. Please come on back. Here's a, a you know, 10% off offer, you know, whatever you wish. And this is, we realize this takes an extra, you know, 30 seconds or 60 seconds, but you get good at it and it gets really fast. We are not in the email, right, mail client delivery game, which is why we recommend doing it this way. Um, anyone who promises you otherwise um, is leading you down a bad path. Again, there's a reason why only a few companies with billions of dollars of resources do this. So little trick to email your entire client base there, okay? And now jumping back to our reports, other reports quickly that are of value, right? Communications, of course, the most important one is the reminders detail report. I'm not going to go into great go into this here because I say that for separate office hours when we work with reminders because this alone could take a half hour and this of course details all your reminders by any date range by any type okay um, also by any category if you just want immunizations right of course it's vaccinations you just come down to here and say I want my immunization reminders and finally this is where we send postcards print cards for selected, right? And in this case, we have, you know, Homer Simpson here, and Homer should pop up then as a, with a postcard. And here we go. Now, you're saying, why are these, why are these others coming up? When they didn't appear, well, you know, if you use reminders, I'm sorry, if you use our actions, right, and inventory items and set up secondary reminders for people. Their secondary uh, reminder preference, in this case for Wilbur Post and Mr. Gargamel was mail, 
these will then automatically print this way too. So it's always a good idea if you're using postcards, do this at the beginning of every month, right? One time, and then you're gonna go ahead and right be able to hit everybody. Because notice you're here like, hey, Wilbur Post, he doesn't have mail. But if you go to his account, his secondary preference is mail. And for a lot of these items, I will have right a secondary reminder in using actions, okay? Jumping back to our reports, contacts, pretty basic, nothing really to cover there. Inventory, of course, your most, I really like the ones we've added recently, are sales by category, sales by item, and then of course the profit margin report. I'm gonna show you a few here really quickly, and the controlled substance report. So the sales by category, again, any kind of date range, if I wanted to take my numbers for last quarter, oops, I come to here, I say last quarter, and voila, first it gives me a breakdown here, boom, 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 and then it breaks it down right by item, <laughs> right? Great detail here. So you can really take a look at how, you know, the, the nitty gritty granular details of every sale. Okay. And by the way, all this is duplicated in the inventory history of any item if you click on the sales tab. Uh, profit margins. People don't talk about this report much. And I'm using, I like to use it and say, hey, once a month, you should skim this and look at just the profit loss percent here and see if the numbers make sense, okay? 900% uh, profit for anesthesia. You might say that's extreme, but anesthesia is a very, right, um, important field where people will, well, they will pay the going rate, and that seems fine. I'm looking here for numbers that are extremely out of whack. Um, dental chew treats is 475% profit. Is this, was this intended? Right? Or was it a user error? Did I not want to have the profit that high? On the other hand, right, you know, Bordadella, did I mean to have a four almost 4,000% markup? Maybe this should have been 45.85. Allows you a quick, you know, look over to make sure the numbers you're not gouging people. But at the same time, I'm looking for losses. I'm looking for anything in the negatives because I might make a mistake. Oh, wait, why am I losing 100% profit on these items? Oh, they're syringes, okay? They are part of the, right, there's a sunken cost. I absorb that cost. You say, oh, maybe that's okay. Or maybe I need to start charging more, right? Because I'm losing a lot there. Um, or to catch any errors, right? Syringes, this is disposable, right? That's part of my costs. Um, and you know, these are all supply items, but they're good to review to make sure you're not losing anywhere right, where you shouldn't be. These are all supply items I seem to be, you know, these are sunken costs and that's okay, right? But the idea is you review this and make sure, and I just do this, you know, I'm just skimming it, right, to make certain numbers seem to make sense, right? And I notice that all of my losses are for supply items. And maybe you're like, that's okay. This is what I intended. 105% profit on Clavamox, $3,350. This would present, you know, prevent an embarrassing moment at checkout. Could have been a human error. Maybe it should have been just $3.50. You get the idea. Okay. Finally, our, our crown jewel is the controlled substance log, which automatically, right, will report any use of controlled substance, not just if they're administered to the patient, but for any purchase you know, resupply, or any adjustments you make. So for example, hey, what am I talking about? I'm just gonna do a control F fine for purchase. Oh, I, you know, here I logged a purchase order from Pfizer, 100 ml, back, uh, back in April, okay? Notice it increases the, right, a stock on hand. What if I had to make an adjustment because of spillage or broken vial? Wow, adjustments. You make that adjustment in inventory, it automatically appears on the controlled substance report. And here we go, okay?
Let me pause quickly, see if there's any chat questions. And uh, everything seems to be okay, good. All right, we are almost through this. And then I come to billing, and I'm not going to go into the oodles and oodles of billing reports, but these are right pretty much all, all the things that you need. Um, payments by provider, right? Daily transaction detail. This is something mostly you, your accountants work with. Uh, you guys get the idea. Um, I don't need to really go into this because it's something people seem to understand. Wellness plans, of course, is only if your clinic is using wellness plans. And then, of course, the staff reports about tasks, completed, open, and open tasks, and a task summary. The good news is later in the year, we're going to be move, we're adding a feature where the tasks will be um, visible on the, patient, on the patient history, the patient history, I think, and the client history, or either or. I'm not certain yet. I haven't seen it. But you'll be able to see the tasks then, right? Actually, yeah, you'll be seeing the tasks on the client and patient side, depending on, depending on whom the task was there for. Call client, right? What have you. And it's going to show uh, the task history on a patient and client level. So we're adding that enhancement too, per a lot of requests. So that is a brief overview of reports. I just like to always emphasize what's most important. Um, right now, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, sorry, Jordan, <laughs> uh, for that. If you want to unmute yourself and just let me know if you have any questions out loud or any chat questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, like I said, the, the, the video with the sessions being recorded and my little Microsoft thing here keeps, we're going to quit that. Good. And I'm going to not save that and get that out of there. Good. And we come back to this. So it'll be recorded and posted later in the customer community. Um, looks like I don't see anything else. So I'm going to wish everybody here a great rest of the day. Please enjoy the new features and give us a call if any questions. Again, this is Matt Zayner, our Director of Client Development, and thank you very much for your time. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.